J.C. Hall, who is actually a pastor. He's a pastor of God, Guns, and Liberty.com. And the husband of Chris Ann Hall. Pastor J.C. is a Navy veteran and a patriot. It is Freedom Angel's honor to welcome Mr. and Mrs. Hall to the stage. California Patriots, how about it? Woo, you guys are awesome. Man, we, Chris Ann and I have traveled this country. Chris Ann has taught over the last 10 years, an average of 265 constitutional classes in 22 states every single year. We average four days a month at home. Otherwise, we're out fighting for liberty. And as we travel, and I'm fixing to tick off about 49 other states, as we travel, people say, oh man, where, because I guess they're thinking about moving somewhere, right? And they say, where are, where are the best patriots? Where are the most ardent patriots in the country? And I say, California. <laughs> they look at me like I'm crazy. I said, guys, they feel the oppression the most. And I hate to tell you, and you can name some other states, and there's always you know, certain couple of states that pop in people's heads. I didn't say that. <laughs> but you know the patriots I want in my foxhole? That's the patriots in California! <laughs> and I want you to know today, the you are encouraging the rest of the nation! <laughs> to Chris Ann's Facebook, she went live earlier and people jumped on there and they're like, oh, we stand with you, California, I mean, North Carolina, Idaho, Iowa, people all over the place, they look and say, man, California patriots are standing up, what the heck is wrong with us? You, don't be fooled, don't be conned by these lunatics in your house. You, my friends, are the tip of the spear. And I tell you what, tyranny has been exposed. Thank you, pretended King Newsom. Mussolini. Mussolini, thank you. You're nonsense has brought you into the light and you're showing the world who you are. You're showing the tyranny that dwells among us but what you didn't count on not just you being pulled out of the darkness into the light but you've drawn the patriots into the light and we are not going away. And we are not having a liberty rally. We are not having a liberty protest. We are taking a stand, putting our foot down, drawing a line in the sand, and we are beginning a liberty lifestyle. You want a new normal, Newson? Here's your new normal. Rolled out their propaganda and scared people with three million bodies are going to be in the street. And look, good, reasonable people backpedaled and reacted to fear. But the data's in, the propaganda's exposed, we know it's nonsense. I mean, come on. We have traveled North California so much, Northern California. I just did the numbers. I was sitting in the hotel. Ran the numbers myself in the hotel. 60%, 60 percent, 60 freaking percent of the documented cases of the corona is in LA. And it's adjacent counties. 
once a freaking again, these urban knuckleheads are trying to dictate life and every other place in the state. We weren't built for a one-size-fits-all government. That's not who we are. You want to drop a wall between L.A. and Bakersfield? Knock yourself out. But we don't have to abide by what somebody else is doing because you can't run your city right. And that's the crap that's going on all over the country. Yeah. That's the divide. Yeah. But listen, we've been in Southern California too. There are a ton of patriots there. Michael Bolton's running the 10th Amendment Center out of LA. Yeah. So here's a secret, Newsom. We're everywhere. And I hope you've seen this. I, I want to drop this one point before I introduce the most beautiful lady on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to get this, guys. Please tell me this hasn't gone over your head. And I'm not trying to... Well, whatever. <laughs> These federal elections are important. Federal politics are important. There's no question about it but not to the neglect of local and state. Amen. Look around. Yeah. This tyranny has been implemented all over the country at the state and local level. Yeah. If you learn anything from this, let's figure out if you are not protected locally and at your state, you are not protected. Yeah, yeah let's secure the White House. Yeah, let's secure our Congress. But stop ignoring local and state government because when we do, that's what we get. And listen, politicians, state, local, whatever, they dance to the tune of money. So why don't we turn it back around? You know the Chamber of Commerce, I don't know who's out there, this may tick somebody off, but so many Chambers of Commerce around the country have been infiltrated by globalists and Marxists and anti-American anti subversives. Why don't we start Liberty Chambers of Commerce? How about the businesses in your community join together, make up your mind before all this nonsense rolls out again, because it's coming back again, newsflash. Let's go ahead and make up our mind. You may have bullied us. You may have tricked us with fear. It didn't take us long for those of us to figure it out who didn't know it the first time. We figured it out. And we need to decide today. We will never shut down again. It's a whole heck of a lot easier just to stay open than try to reopen. So we need to decide today, folks, we will not shut down ever again. This is the last time. We are opening up, and we are opening up for good. And last, last thing, your nonsense, your labels, Democrat, Republican, left, right, black, white, Christian, non-Christian. Why don't you take a flying leap with your labels? Who we are are Americans. Liberty is our birthright. We were born free. People died to secure that freedom. We to make sure every one of our citizens could enjoy that freedom. We didn't sign up to go back on the chopping block of the slave masters, a sales freaking counter. Excuse me, somebody needs a little fire in their belly. My family moved from Kentucky after the Civil War to Bakersfield, California. I am the descendant of an African slave. My grandfather, great-great-grandfather walked off the plantation, took the knowledge from the plantation, became successful farmers in Bakersfield, 
He didn't, he didn't fight for the government dole. He didn't fight for some government handout. He stood for freedom. And I'm not going to soil the legacy of my great-great-grandfather by bowing when he wouldn't. I don't know what anybody listening is going to do, but as for me and my house, give me liberty or give me death. I'm done. This is not what we do. And it better not be what you do. This is who we are. If this is what you do, you'll fold. You'll quit. You'll go back to the shade. Defending liberty cannot be what you do. It has to be who you are. Ladies and gentlemen, my fantastic, lovely wife, constitutional attorney, Patrick Henry in a skirt. You can find her at chrisannhall.com. There she is, Chris Ann Hall. Hey, you guys, I am so excited to be here today. And I want to give you just a tiny bit of instruction. I want to give you just a tiny bit of, of truth. And it actually begins with the California Oath of Office. Yes. Okay? Because, see, when we try to look at Donald Trump to fix all our problems, when we look at Attorney Barr to fix our problems, what that does is creates a lazy, powerless society. We are not subjects waiting for any higher power other than God to stand behind us. We don't need Donald Trump's permission. We don't need A.G. Barr's gavel. We need liberty and people with a backbone and the courage to stand up and say, we will not comply. Now that makes the snowflakes uncomfortable, so let me just go ahead and set the stage here for you. I'm already called an anti-government extremist hate group. I'm already called all the names you can think about calling me, so it's not going to hurt my feelings. And I've taken down bigger than Gavin Newsom, so he doesn't scare me either. Besides, how dare he defy the army of liberty in California? I want you to think about that. 40 million. There are 40 million people in California. How does one man rule over 40 million people? He doesn't. Only because, because you comply. Now I want to tell you before they just say I'm a seditionist or are teaching you some kind of anti-government rhetoric. You see, the real reality is we are supporting government by being here. It's Newsom that is anti-government. So I want to show you some things to give you some knowledge and some courage to know that you're right because the leftist media 
is going to call you radical extremists. They're going to call you names. They're going to tell you you don't have the right to be here. They're going to tell you that you should just comply, that it's going to be all over in a few minutes anyway, so you should just go along. Well, I want to explain to you, if you give me just a few minutes, on why that is wrong and why you should never listen to it. Yes! Okay? Here is the oath of office for the state of California. By the way, the oath of office that he took. And I'll admit to you here, the oath of office that every single one of these officers standing on the lawn trying to keep you from your house took two. Are you ready? I do. Say your name. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and Are you ready? That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California, and I take this obligation freely without mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. That is the oath. He didn't take an oath to keep you safe. He didn't keep take an oath to keep you virus free. They didn't take an oath to stick a needle in your arm. They didn't take an oath to lock down your house. They didn't take an oath to shut down your business. They took an oath that said the exact opposite. That oath says, I will defend your business to stay open, whatever the cost. I will defend your right to sit here and stand here in this capital at whatever cost. They took the oath to say, I will defend your right to peaceably assemble. Even the Supreme Court of the United States says those steps and that sidewalk are the traditional place where people are to bring their disgrievances to the government. Now let me read to you just a couple things. Because this is the California Constitution. And you should have a pocket California Constitution. You need to have at least the first four articles of the California Constitution in your pocket. You need to know it, okay? I love this one. Are you ready? Yes. Section 1. Article 1. Now remember, he took an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the state of California without hesitation or mental reservation against all enemies foreign and Article 1, Section 1. All people are by nature free and independent and have inalienable rights. You are born free. And you have to know that. Because if you do not know that, if you think your rights come from this Constitution, if you think that man in his ivory throne tower has the authority to give and take away your rights, then you must admit an essential, essential certain truth. You must admit that you were born a slave. You must admit that you were born a slave and it takes people like Newsom to hand out your rights. So are you free or are you a slave? Then he can't take those rights away. He cannot take away what you were born with because he never gave it to you in the first place. It says you are born free and independent. Yes. Do you know what independence relies on? Ownership of property. If you do not own and control your property, you are not independent. You are at best an indentured servant and at most a slave. And when Newsom comes on and says, I have to shut down your business, he didn't build it. 
You guys worked your lives for these businesses. You worked for generations to build a heritage for your family. He didn't build it and he can't take it away. Listen, you have inalienable rights. Among these are enjoying and defending life, liberty, acquiring, possessing, and protecting property, and pursuing and obtaining safety, happiness, and privacy. That is your constitution. He took an oath to support and defend wow. your right, wow. your ability to, I, I want you to hear this, to possess and protect your own property, yeah. your right to defend your life and your liberty, your right to pursue and obtain your own safety. He's not responsible for your safety. You're responsible for your safety. He's not responsible for your life. You're responsible for your life. He didn't build your government. He didn't build your property. You built that property. It is your possession. It is your right. And it is inalienable. Now there are a bunch of things in here, but there's one more section that I want to read to you. Article 3, Section 3. The powers of state government are legislative, executive, and judicial. Persons charged with the exercise of one power may not exercise either of the others except as permitted by this Constitution. Article 4, Section 1. The legislative power of this state is vested in the California legislature. Article 5, Section 1. The supreme executive power of the state is vested in the governor. The governor shall see that the law is faithfully executed. The legislature is delegated the authority to make laws by the Constitution, not the governor. The governor by the Constitution is prohibited from making laws because it violates an essential principle of liberty called separation of powers. James Madison, fourth president of the United States. History calls him the father of the Constitution. Says that when the legislative and the executive powers rest in one person, Liberty cannot survive. I want you to know that we hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal and endowed by Gavin Newsom. Endowed by your county commissioner. Endowed by your Supreme Court. Endowed by your Creator with certain unalienable rights. Now listen, it says, among these rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and when you study with me the Constitution, you understand that pursuit of happiness is a direct relationship to that section one, Article 1, Section 1 in your Constitution, the ownership and control of your property. But then it goes on. This is probably one of the most important things. And that to secure your rights, governments are instituted among men deriving their just power from the consent of the government. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. The only reason that building exists, the only reason Gavin Newsom is justified in getting a paycheck is to secure your rights. So let's just review rather quickly. Number one, the California Constitution says your rights are inalienable, you are born free and independent. Those rights, life, liberty, property, and the defense of those things belong to you, not to them. That the legislature makes the laws not the governor. Yeah. And he took an oath that said he will support and defend that, those things right there. Do you know what that means? 
He is violating the supreme law of California, and I will tell you right now, he is violating at least seven sections of your state constitution. He made you a promise. He swore to you a promise that he would defend your rights through that constitution, and he is not defending them, he is denying them. He is failed. But I thought he was about the law. And he needs to go. We need to be the people that our founders ha wanted us to be. We have this spirit in us. We have this spirit in us. This spirit that said 244 years ago, no more kings. And now you have a governor that looks more like a monarch than a servant of the people. And we need to repeat again in California in 2020, no more kings. No more kings. No more kings. No more kings. No. More kings. no. They call us radical. They call us extreme. Do you know what is radical and extreme? One man exercising power over 40 million people. That is radical and that is extreme. Do you know what is radical and extreme? Setting aside 240 years of history and saying I am going to be a governor that rules over the people no way no that more. is radical yeah. no more don't let them name call you don't let them shut you down don't let them make you scared if we stand together we cannot be defeated yeah. Thomas Paine said, it's not in numbers that we gather our strength, but in unity. Amen. And we must together say, we will not comply. We will not comply anymore. I want you to understand, you don't have to comply. I hate this term, civil disobedience. I hate it. Number one, you're not being disobedient. He is. engaging in peaceful non-compliance to enforce the supreme law of California that he is breaking. We are the defenders of our rights. He is the violator of those and he is the domestic threat to the lives and liberties of you and your children to come. So here's the question. What kind of America do you want to live in? What kind of America do your children want to live in? We have to work. We have to work to give them something better than what we had. It is our job. We are here. We've been doing what we've been doing for 10 years because we have a 14-year-old that deserves something better. We need teachers. We need daycare workers that tell the governor, you can shove that mask where it don't shine. I'm not putting it on my kids. We need people that love liberty more than a paycheck. We need parents who will say, fine, you want to stick me? I get to stick you, but I go first. And then it's the only sticking that's going to happen. We have to stand up now. Because if we don't stand now, this is where it falls. This is it. This is it, America. This is it. 
tread lightly because we will bite. Yes. So here we go. Two things and then I'm done. What you want for your children will be determined by what you do today. It is your business, not his. It is your home, not his. It is your life, not his. Render under Caesar what is Caesar's, that's fine. But Caesar did not give me his li my life. Caesar does not own my family. Caesar did not build my business. Caesar does not, is not in charge, nor did he give me my health. I will not render my home, my family, my business, or my health to Caesar because those did not come from Caesar. They came from God, and I will live my life to glorify him, even if it means to defy that king. And it's just simple. It may not be easy, but it is simple. All you have to do is believe in your heart and say with your mouth, we will not comply. 244 years ago, our founders said no more kings. Can you imagine where we would be today if Samuel Adams said, well, let's just comply a little bit longer. Where would we be today if Benjamin Franklin said, well, you know, they're going to send me a $2,000 check, so it'll be okay. Where would we be today if George Washington said, well, you know, I really need that paycheck to feed my family, so I'll go and be a scary sight to try to scare people off so they don't defend their own liberty. Do you know, do you know what you call that? Maybe they don't know what you call that. In constitutional law, we call that the chilling effect. The only reason they're out there is to put fear in your heart and make you go home. Are we being in, are, are there troops, are there foreign troops down the, marching down the streets? Are there airplanes dropping bombs on us? Then why this martial array? that they currently lack. We need to have the fortitude that doesn't exist in that house. And we need to say, 244 years ago we declared no more kings and we will not undo 244 years of settled history for a radical, deceptive, destructive, and deceiving ideology to make us all into docile subjects, we must say, we will not comply. We will not comply. We will not comply. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris Ann. You're amazing. Thank you, JC. Another round of applause for Chris Ann Hall and Jean, Pastor JC, all the way from Florida. Okay, we are just.